Okay, so I was actually going on holiday to Ibiza at the time and we'd all arranged how we were getting to the airport, whatever. So on the way to the airport, we were in a Tavo road traffic accident and I couldn't actually get my seatbelt on in the back of the car. Um, it was just like everything went into slow motion, but basically the car dragged, hit the side of the road, flipped, and I went out the back window of the car. But before that happened, I actually knew that I was supposed to go out the back window of the car. It was in my head, like with my adrenaline, it was like put to me step by step every action that I needed to take. As I went out the back window of the car, the first thought that went through my head was I can't die, I'm not a mummy yet. And at that moment, it was like I had a decision put to me and I can't remember seeing anybody, hearing anybody, but the choice was there in my head, nearly as if it was there telepathically. And it was a decision that I had to make and it was, you can stay here and stay with your friends and family and you will have your baby, but you will suffer from chronic pain or you can pa pass through, um, but you'll have to leave your friends and family behind and you'll not have your baby. Um, so my answer telepathically to that question was I couldn't die, it would kill my mummy. And just at just at that, I then woke up at the side of the road and the all the madness that was then going on around me. Um mayhem. I to be alive. I sort of knew it was really bad. But I was actually more interested in seeing if everybody else was okay. And I actually said there was a man holding me and I said, No, let me up, I need to see if my friends are all okay. And he said, Love, I can't let you up, there's metal sticking out of your back. And then that's when everything sort of hit me then. So I knew things were pretty bad because I was struggling to breathe, but um, my injuries were very extensive overall. So I broke my neck, my back, basically from the top of my neck to halfway down my back. I broke my right wrist. I fractured all of my ribs which actually punctured both of my lungs so once i woke up from the induced coma i was in intensive care for around a week or two moved from there down to high dependency um then down to the fracture ward and this whole time i couldn't like i had a catheter and i couldn't go to the toilet myself I was basically having to be spoon fed because, well, I broke my right wrist and I'm right handed. Um, I couldn't move, couldn't get up out of the bed at all, couldn't actually sit up out of the bed. And I never actually really thought about any of that until the physios came around to try and get me then up and walking. Um, um, and it sort of hit me then. I might not be able to stand or walk um, and I think with everything going on today and I never really thought about any of that, sorry, but um, yeah, so that all hit me like a ton of bricks in. These things were going through my head, I might not actually be able to walk again here, like I might end up in a wheelchair and for me. I don't think I could have dealt with that very well at all. So, all in, I was in the hospital for, I think, around two months, eight weeks or so anyway, maybe at least. And from there, I then went to stay with my sister in her house because I needed help to do things. Um, I was sort of dependent on other people at that stage. As far as even being able to get waste and stuff, like, so I had a, a neck, sort of, a, I can't remember what you call it, a neck brace, there's an aspen collar, that's what it was, so the aspen collar that I had to wear, 
I also broke this wrist I'm right handed so I was able to sort of feed myself but I needed help with washing and stuff like that which was really embarrassing. My sister and my niece had to do that. Um, yeah so I used to just get in the bath with like my underwear on and let them dress my hair and stuff but although it was embarrassing it obviously had to be done and it was just part of how I thought my life was going to be then part that way so I stayed in my sister's house for almost four months then and then from there when I was able to sort of get myself to the toilet a wee bit better and up on my feet a wee bit more um, then I went home. So during that sort of recovery period from going from my sister's house to back being on my own I had to sort of nearly learn how to walk again basically um, it was very painful but I was determined um, to try and get back to as much normality as possible I actually got in my car and drove around the block to see if I would be comfortable with even driving at that point and thank god in my head I was like well I'm in control of this car so I'll be fine but so medication wise I was sent home with absolutely everything from the hospital obviously I had been on morphine and stuff in the hospital so it was like Cocodamol, 30 over 500, Tramadol, um, Paracetamol, Larica at one stage. My hopes for the future is to use my experience and what I went through to help other people to help people to understand that although things can go wrong and bad things happen in your life it's up to you and you can turn things back around for yourself again but you have to put the work in and you want to have to do it and it's about discovering who you are as a person and really doing your inner work and it's not easy but it is completely worth it. Reiki has definitely helped me with my journey with the pain um, it's actually very powerful and for a while I sort of dabbled in and out with it and you sort of forget how good it actually is so I think that's why I'm now on track with it so much again because I would like to help other people with it um, not only has it helped me with the pain it's helped me to understand the way the world is a wee bit better as far as energy is concerned and working with energy. Go easy on me baby, I was still a child, didn't get the chance to Show